Hello, everyone. This is Ari in the air. Welcome back to the channel. Stoked you're here. Today, it is December 22nd, 2023, which is my 35th birthday. And I would just like to take a moment to tell you thank you for being a part of this wild journey that has been my life in action sports and growing up and maturation and particularly paragliding. So today I want to share with you some of the sweetest fruits of this life, which have been the unbridled enthusiasm and surreal experiences that sport has brought me. So today I'm going to take you back to the Dolomites. One of the last days of adventure I had with my local friends there. And I want to share with you, like I said, some of the sweetest fruits of my life. Ready? Here we go. Okay, so in German, Rot is red. Vant is wall. We're going to the red wall. Rot Vant in the Dolomites, this spectacularly beautiful place. The day before, we had paraglided here and then gone up for a sunset attempt to base jump off. It did not work. It was way too windy and it was kind of funny. We hiked down in the dark. It was excruciating. The hike is like 4,000 vert. And we took the chairlift up. By the time we got down, the chairlift was closed. So we walk all the way down the 1600 vert that the chairlift didn't take us down. Uh, it was quite brutal. Then the next day may have been one after that. Roland and I rallied again for a redemption attempt. So here we are on top of the road vaunt. First thing in the morning, you can see there's a bunch of climbers. It's a long via ferrata to get up there and you have to use the, the chains and the cables and it's super cool. We end up just like passing people, you know, there's just like a line of people climbing. And so I just free solo on the side and just go scrambling up and passing everyone. We get to the top. The conditions are absolutely ideal. And as I play this clip, you can see that there's small cumulus clouds developing over the high terrain. It's shaping up to be a really good day for paragliding. And the conditions right now to base jump are just totally ideal. So Rolo and I have a moment of gratitude before we jump off this huge cliff. Good, though, Thanks, bro. Love you. Thank uh, you for everything. Yeah. It's been he such supported me ridiculously with his van, his house, money, Three, two, anything I need. One, see ya, my friend. Oh, push hard. Look at us, just tracking. As you can see, I get ready to pull my parachute because I'm in a t-shirt and shorts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about a hundred yeah. degree off heading to the left. Yeah, yeah buddy! <laughs> Roll out! As you can imagine, jumping off a cliff like that is so adrenaline, adrenaline inducing that it just when you survive it and your parachute opens perfectly, you just are so elated with life. And I just mm, love it. So there are gonna be some expletives here. Yeah. Okay, trigger warning. Also, this is one of the scarier glides of my life. Oh, that was so <laughs> With a huge wall behind me. Yes, I did take off my helmet to record that. Here I'm gliding, gliding over the chairlift. Glide it. A little speed up here. Just threading the needle here, folks. Just threading the fucking needle. Oh yeah, T fucking green grassy landings. <laughs> Yeah, that was so good. Yes. Oh, I wish.
Yeah, here we go. <laughs> oh my god, I just love that so much. It's such a joy to watch back on it, you know, to the moments of like just pure elation and ecstasy in my life. It's just so great. And as I come in to land there, I'm just like giggling. And then as I have just an absolutely tiptoe landing on the softest, most manicured green grass. The contrast between jumping off of like a 500 meter tall cliff that's over nothing but jagged boulders and just a few moments later landing on perfectly green grass that softly, the contrast is just hilarious. It's just mm, chef's kiss, right? So good. So, wow, what a base jump. And base jumping is such a crazy sport. It's so beautiful and so wonderful. And uh, you just have to be so enthusiastic about your life to partake in that. And it's just like, oh, I'm not that experienced. You know, I'm, I'm sub 60 base jumps, but um, I've gotten to base jump with some really experienced and talented people all over the world. So super grateful for my participation in that sport, however small. Okay. So what we do after we land those base canopies, and as you can see, I like glide it down the hill as far as I possibly can. I'm like, how far am I going to make it? I don't know. I'm gliding over these trees. Oh, now I'm gliding over a chairlift. Oh, it's like roads and all these things. And, you know, and I'm gliding as far as I can because I still have to walk down the hill. Like no matter how far I glide, I still have to walk. So trying to maximize that glide, minimize that walk. We basically just walk back down to the car. We put the parachutes away. We grab our hike and fly paragliding kits. We get back on the chairlift and we go up and the paragliding launch is just above the top of the chairlift. So before we launch, we sit there and we have a espresso at the top, you know, at the Huta at the top and uh, we go to launch. This is the first clip that I've recorded. So there was a little bit of flying just before this, but basically like the guys launched and they like weren't booming out quite yet. Like the previous day we had just launched and just like specked out immediately right over launch and it wasn't quite working like that. So I waited, they launched and they're scratching and scratching and they're like, come on launch. And I'm standing there with my A's in my hand, like oh, give it just a second. And this puff comes up and it works. And I launch. To give you an idea of who I'm flying with today, I'm flying with Rolo, the man who I just did that base jump with, a great friend of mine. And um, he was the first Italian to ever do infinity tumbling. Okay, He's from Dorf Tirol, where Aaron Duragati is from. And um, he's a started flying acrobatics when he was 16 years old. Simon, the other man who I'm flying with on this day, is the former Italian national acrobatics champion. So flying with really, really, really experienced paragliding pilots here who are just super talented and have, at this point, I've been in Italy for almost a month and have just become very close friends of mine. Roland has been a friend of mine for years. We met in Canada, highlining and base jumping, and we've been close ever since. But I just want to set the stage there because so much of what this flight and this video is about is actually the intersection between paragliding and friendship. And it's really beautiful and it brings up a ton of gratitude in me to have made these kinds of relationships through sport. You know, there's that saying that men go on adventures, sometimes friendships are made. And um, it's so beautiful that these sports can bring us into an arena that we really have to humble ourselves and we really have to like take our mask off or we have the opportunity to. And the men that you meet who are willing to like do a similar level of intimacy, vulnerability, humility, and practice also like, cause like at the end of the day, like I need to fly with people who have a similar risk tolerance to me and a similar, uh, aptitude, like the people who can keep up the people who want to send it. And, you know, like our goal was like, we're going to fly to the Marmalada and we're going to top land and we're going <laughs> to cheers. So, so here we go. This is the road vaunt. And this is Ridge running. So I've separated from them at this point because they stayed in the house thermal and I knew that the house thermal was not the fast way up today. I knew that there was a faster way. So I fly along the ridge here. I'm not terribly close, but there's a climber here. I think I give him a little shaka, right? A little Hawaiian in the Dolomites. And just listen, I'm just trying to find the, the strongest piece of climb. Oh, there's a little hole in the rock right there. That's sick. It's so fun to watch this back with you. 
Okay, it gets pretty strong right here. Pretty good, I think it was like two and a half or something. So I turn around, I wanna make sure that I'm not just gonna fly through the big core, cause I know there's a big core around here somewhere. And no, the big core is not there. You notice I fly away from the rocks briefly just to clear my turn, just to make sure that I don't really have to like crank it in super close to the wall, even though I then feather it in nice and close to make sure that the core is not in fact right on the wall, which sometimes in the Dolomites it is. So this is the Rotvont proper. You can see this peak here. This is where I had just jumped off of just a couple hours before. And this corner is quite productive. Okay, if you pause right here, you can see this is Simon and he's way over here in the house thermal. I think they're about the same altitude as I am and I'm about to totally just smoke them out of here. That's like three and a half and here, that's like five and a half. And so I know that I've found it and just look on that single turn if you just go back just a minute here, let's just look and see how much I go up in just one turn. So here's here's coming into it, looking at it. Okay, beep, 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 beep. Lifting me right over that little corner. Okay, and then watch. Look how much higher I am. I'm 100 meters higher in one turn. <laughs> it's crazy. 70 meters higher. So beautiful. And this is just cranking out of here. And you can see I don't have my gloves on yet. This is the first climb. You can see how much lower my friends are now. And now we're starting to see over the back here. And basically, I don't know all of the names here. I know that this is the Rotvont, and then I can't remember the name of this group, but basically to give you an idea of our route, we fly in the direction that the camera is facing now, and we fly back onto this terrain. And then there was a kind of a cruxy move where there was sort of a lot of wind and we were kind of in the lee and it didn't look great. And I kind of let myself be the champion of our destiny and push in there first. And we ended up making it work and flying over the back of all of this. And then we hop mountains over into this direction. And then you can see here on the right side of the screen is this huge mountain that has these incredibly sheer cliffs. This is a legendary place to wingsuit and base jump. It's called Passepordoy. And it's a beautiful mountain. We're going to fly right over that on this flight. So that's kind of the route that we're going to go. A lot of that I don't have on camera because I don't record things unless they're blowing my mind. <laughs> so I hope, hope to bring them back to blow your mind. Stronger the lift, stronger the turn. Just like that, climbed out, boom. Boom, turn my camera off. Okay, now I've gotten to cloud base here. 13,000, 13,300. Highest point in the top five. Just killing it today. Oh we are just God, killing it. Yes, baby. Pospordoy inbound. So this is Roland on the Omega X Alps 3. And we're just close enough we can talk right to each other. Didn't have radios at all. <laughs> and he's making fun of me because I turn inside of him all the time and he hates it, um, which has been a complaint of my paragliding for quite some time. <laughs> and it didn't work there because he outclimbed me, but oh, here it is. Okay, so we're getting to cloud base. Fucking A, dude. Just. just Seriously incredible stuff. <laughs> we're headed it's towards the marmalada! Singing. Five. Fuck, we're, high. we're singing, we're laughing. And I think this is Roland and I, we're so close, but watch. I think we fly into two very different parcels of air here. Just epic moments of my life. Just 
<laughs> the celebration. So beautiful. <laughs> Look at you go! You're so handsome like this! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, man. Fuck it. I don't have to touch it. Just let it go. Just let it roll. Let the good times roll. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big sink. Feeling silly. Okay, Big sink. Full speed. Full speed. Oh, Grab the rears quick. Like a ding dong. And then watch what happens here. Roll out in lift. Me in sync. You can hear my sync alarm. Look at that. Look at that lift. Look at that lift. Look at that lift. Okay. That's a perfect example of how close sync can be to lift. Look at it. We're 200 meters separated now. In just a couple of seconds. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> Flying onto the flank of the marmalada here. This is like the pre-mountain that leads onto it. I'm sure it has a name. I'm sure you Italians will comment it. Here's Simon. He's flying an XE Racer 2, which is a glider that I have and love from Flo. Simon almost landed pretty early on. <laughs> he's an Fuck apple yeah. farmer. <laughs> yeah. He's a paragon pilot. You made it! Yeah. Woo! He flies with free brakes on that XC Racer 2 and his turning, like you can just tell he's so good by the way he just yeah, turns the glider. He has so much control over that thing. Right, here comes There's Rolo. Rolo yeah. <laughs> We're gaggling up on the marmalada. <laughs> After Simon almost landed, we almost lost him a long ways back. <laughs> Just ecstatic! Yeah! <laughs> the three of us! Yes. Yeah, boys. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Rolo says the wind is the wrong direction to top land on the marmalada. So we say, let's not top land then. Don't force it. Don't force it. Here's more climb. Yeah. Very strong conditions, but also just like yeah, ideal. Yeah. Oh, Rolo's got it right there. Yeah, he pushes a little further. He pushes yeah. a little, pushes a little further. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> turn, turn. Yeah, Rolo. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So beautiful. I feel so lucky to poop a paraglider. Turn your fucking turn, your fucking glider, come on. <laughs> I don't know where he's going, but that seems like four meters a second I should turn. Oh, oh see? Just neck breaking, trying to keep track of your buddies when it's working so well. Yeah! Oh my god! 
So good, get on the speed bar. We're gonna fly right over the top of the marmalada proper. Just the bros. The bros. The marmalada, yeah. <laughs> Look at this thing. This Shrinking glacier, glaciers. Yeah. Simon's got some serious bite on that XC Racer too. He's got a couple of clicks of performance on both the Zeolite GT that I'm on and the X Alps, the Omega X Alps that Rollo's on. The XC Racer 2 has Rolo's some serious skipping. advantage. It's a full racing two-liner as opposed to the X Alps gliders. The racing two-liners like the Xenos and the XC Racer 2s have way more performance. A couple clicks, pretty substantial. Just look at the terrain we're over. Just incredible! Oh my god! Mm. I gotta say, I've... Burr, yeah. I, I've had some amazing partnerships in my life, but I'm just feeling particularly grateful for my friendships with men. Look at the cloud forming below us here. Oh, we're flying through wisps. Look at this magical moment here. Just wisping hard right here. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay, so pause oh, here. Fuck. We are, the rote vaunt is this peak here. We are trying to go around, like, all the way up these mountains, over this, through this valley, and then up through this valley and onto the far side of this peak is where the car is. Into headwind, through here, this is a Venturi, right? The boot of Italy is that way, and the heart of the Alps is behind us, and we're trying to go kind of into the wind here in the afternoon, so it's not easy. but we're just elated, all three of us. <laughs> Rider twist. <laughs> Did we get Simon out of there? Did we get Simon? Where's... Yeah, we got Simon. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah. It is a bit shady, so I'm not totally... You know, like, yeah, late afternoon after it's been working so good to fly back into the wind. Way you came. We're gonna make it back through the pass and around the mountain. Woo! I believe. Just gliding with your friends on an incredible cross country flight after just such an amazing trip we, where I feel like a survivor and a We got this! And I feel like royalty just the way the Italians treat me in the whole what? country. We're gonna make it! A little encouragement. Found some good lift here, and Rollo is following me into it. <laughs> I'm still just on a total high from this just whole day. So it's also just like makes me so grateful that I've put the time in to 
be at pair, you know, to be like as comfortable paragliding as I am so that I can really just like in these moments where the conditions are strong and the terrain is gnarly to really just be like focused on my experience and my connection with people and oh. cloud surf, cloud surfing with your buddies. We gotta go. He goes into a little thicker bit of it. Give me some space. <laughs> Give him some space. <laughs> yeah, buddy, get eaten up right there. Get eaten up. I can still see him. I can still see him. Yeah. <laughs> 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 A little cloud flying with your buddies. <laughs> oh my god! What a fun fucking thing to do! Oh man! Right? Woo! Right? Okay. It's still going up. Big dark cloud in front of us. Gonna try to make it through the pass. It's definitely gonna be venturing through there. It'll definitely be the crux. Try to leave this this crossing, leave this climb as high as possible here. Yeah. Amazing. I'm grateful this thing is recording. Big sink, full speed. Rollo's got a couple hundred meters on me. Yeah, buddy, what a day! Yeah. What a day! Oh my god. Am I just gonna fly right into this cloud? What's about to happen here? What is about to happen? The answer is yes. Sure. <laughs> Spoiler alert. But I'm at 12,600 feet. I feel like maybe the edge or <laughs> just, or just punch it. Just, just center punch, punch it? it. Uh, I'm not going in. I'm going under. <laughs> not going in. I'm going under, I say. But getting awfully close to the rope vaunt again. Right? One big valley crossing and then pushing it into the Venturi. There, that high terrain in the saddle there, it's high terrain in the saddle, is the Venturi. The wind comes into the Alps there. And it's in the Alps, but it's coming up the bigger and bigger to the main spine. Okay, here I'm kind of turning the light lift, trying to wait. Just waiting for my boy. There, so I'm gonna kind of stay in this direction and use that as my out. It looks like it's lifting in the middle, doesn't it? Okay, so that's just. A, I'm also kind of falling, so maybe it's. That's just a little bit about my, my theory when I'm flying near clouds. Like I'm always keeping that out, right? Like the kind of going up everywhere right here. The edge of the cloud, and then I'm also like paying attention to like where the bottom of the cloud seems to be moving, developing, changing. And so yeah, I'm flying here. Because I want to fly towards the big lift, but I also need to have an out because I don't want to get totally well, sucked into the cloud. we know that if we go into the white room, we just go west and just push through the path yeah. in a cloud. It's kind of true. It's kind of true. Just stick with it. If you Keep on your heading. If you ever go into a cloud, just hold your heading. Don't ever turn. I want to turn, but I can't out. see. If you ever find yourself in a cloud, it's going to happen accidentally. You shouldn't intentionally go into a cloud, but if you do find yourself in a cloud accidentally, don't turn. Stay on the heading. Use your instrument to maintain your heading. Use full speed. Oh, here we go. Here's a little moment of my life right here. Un fucking incredible. Incredible. There's really nothing be better than flying Just out of incredible. a cloud through the wisps. Paragliding is not the coolest thing you can do. I don't know what is. Cause look at this shit. Oh my god. I mean, a lot of people <laughs> had a heyday over the paragliding being the pinnacle of sport Just comment, but a, I mean. Like, you fly out of the clouds, having used nothing but nature to get there. I think I'm going to make it, man. Where's Rolo? Fly a hundred miles Where's in a day. It's like... Okay, so Rolo made a mistake, went into that cloud, got sucked up, Simon took a frontal or something. I can't remember, but he epicked in there. <laughs> and I didn't see him for so long. <laughs> Which is pretty hilarious. Where? Where's Rolo? <laughs> he's, de 
He's deep in that white room. <laughs> yeah, he went yeah, to the white room he's there. He's deep in there. Let's he see. shouldn't have, Let's but he, he didn't mean to, him. but he did. <laughs> Is he going to be frozen? <laughs> Is he going to be covered in ice? I have been sucked into clouds yeah, to like 15,000 feet here in Central Oregon, and I came out <laughs> totally covered in ice, hypoxic, my lines completely frozen. Yeah. God, he's just gonna come out from the fucking ceiling of that. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> I am laughing about it because <laughs> it's hilarious. Is he? Oh my god, we went in together and I'm out and he's not. Where the fuck is he? <laughs> am I looking in the wrong place? I don't know. Maybe. Okay, so let's I'll pause it here in just a second when I get a good angle. I do spend quite a lot of time looking for him. So here we go. So I think this peak right here, this peak is the Rotvont. And so the place that I'm trying to get is around this corner and uh, down into this valley where the golf course is that we're parked at. And I make it. And I've got abundant altitude. And I turn my camera on and do some wingovers down to the ground, but it only records a couple of them because it had frozen at 13,500 feet. So I didn't have a bunch of recording battery left. But you guys, um, like I said, today's my 35th birthday. I just want to thank everyone who's been along for this ride on YouTube and Instagram and all of my friends and all of my mentors and everyone who I've flown with and all of the American comp pilots. And especially to the paraglide pilot men who have been working with me in my coaching practice, which has been transformational for all of us. Um, we're making big gains over there. It's so fun to work with paraglide pilots on their life and their perspectives and their relationships and their skills. I've been here on YouTube trying to give you my skills for a long time. And uh, it's nice to have a venue and an outlet where I can share with you the other skills that I have that I can, um, that make your life better and make paragliding better too. So thanks so much. Happy holidays. Hope you're well. See you in 2024, motherfuckers. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>